you've seen amazing strides within Kenya, and it's only continued to, to exponentially increase. What has been interesting, however, has been the way in which in many other countries, there was huge optimism and expectation that, that mobile payments such as M-Pesa or indeed M-Pesa itself being uh, used in other countries would have the same effect. And that has not happened. To put it into perspective, the, the expectations that M-Pesa arose uh, for example, both with the people and also the providers of the service, was that we would see something similar happening to, say, neighboring Tanzania. After all, it's right next door, um, has some elements which were similar in terms of the factors. Um, you had 95% actually of the population not having access to, to bank accounts or the financial markets. And so it was a, a market ripe for an M-Pesa um, adoption. In Tanzania, you have a number of things that are quite different. So if you like, on the surface, things seem to be very similar. But when you look under the hood, you see that there are, for example, a number of cultural differences that, that are at play. If you go back in history, in the 70s, when Julius Nairi was certainly shaping the country politically and culturally, he set up what's called a villagization policy which really helped promote very strong contained local villages. Very different from what you see in, in Kenya where it, it's much more an accepted norm and practice for people from the villages to go to the urban areas and work and send back money. And indeed that was the mantra of M-Pesa that really took off in Kenya, sending money home. When you transpose that to, to Tanzania, um, the, it just from the, the perspective of not having the same practices of people working and moving to the urban areas in quite the same way, they, there wasn't the same level of, of, of ability to have wide take up. Other things if I, would be around the fact that uh, Kenya has a national ID policy. And that was hugely important for being able to, to, to prove who you were when you went into these kiosks to, to, to deposit or, or receive money. Uh, it, it helped to facilitate quite widespread adoption. Whereas there isn't any such uh, national ID uh, policy within Tanzania, that again was another crucial difference. When we look at these new business models, we don't look enough at the, the, infra, the, the technological infrastructure which is needed to support and drive that new business model. And, what, and, and PESA is a very good example of that, because even though uh, uh, in Tanzania there were some uh, challenges for different reasons for, for, for the takeoff being as strong as it was in Kenya, though it was still healthy, uh, in Afghanistan, where it was also deployed, they were very mindful from the start that they expected, if you like, the, the cultural differences. They knew it was a Muslim country, they knew that literacy was an issue, and indeed they were able to draw on and flexibly develop the infrastructure to revert back to actually what M-Pesa was initially intended for, which was to support microloans. So the flexibility of the underlying technology and being aware of the in a contextual way about what the design is, allowed them to, to if you like, switch over from the money transfer mechanism to uh, supporting microloans. And on top of that, uh, recognizing that literacy rates were much lower, to have uh, voice recognition capabilities added onto the design interface when they deployed it in Afghanistan. We don't try to change the culture sometimes, we recognize and respect the culture and then we see uh, what are the appropriate types of services that, that work and align within that culture. So that flexibility and sensitivity to the cultural uh, values and traits um, are crucial in, in, in figuring out what is the design solution that might be successful within a particular city or culture.